Deck building is still a hugely popular genre of card games. And today we're going to be taking a look at one more card game in that genre. What are we talking about? Zeppelin Attack! Look at this cover. There's a guy jumping off a ship on a bomb with a knife in his mouth. Does the game in the box live up to this amazing cover? Let's take a look. Let's talk about it. I'm going to explain to you how the game works and then we'll come back and I'll tell you my final thoughts. To set up the game, the first thing you'll do is you're going to shuffle all these piles and set them up on the table. And each type of card goes in its own pile. So you have uh, operatives and defense uh, cards, attack cards, and two different types of zeppelins here. As well as this fate deck, which I'll get to in a moment. And then each player will also pick a faction that they want to play. So for example, for me, I am Der Dynamo. And this is... Uh, this is my flagship, that's the name of the ship, and, and uh, the faction, I represent this wonderful looking gentleman there, who I believe escaped from a film, and his name is Der Blitzman. And so I have that card, which is, it starts on the table, that's my main Zeppelin, and then I also have a deck of cards, which is composed of 11 cards, plus two of these Fate cards, which come from that deck right there, a four and a three. Every player will do that. So this person over here has the Ice Storm, which is uh, Jacqueline Frost's flagship. And then over here, we have Gorilla Car. Everybody gets their deck, you shuffle it up, and you're going to draw five cards. All right, and then you are ready to start. The way the game works is, at the end of the game, which is going to happen when three of these decks are gone, of those five, then at that point you're going to count up who has the most stars on their cards, which you can see right here, that's victory points, and whoever has the most victory points is the winner. So, on your turn what you'll do is very simple. You are going to be able to play one Zeppelin on the table if you have one, so in this case I did not draw one, but for example if I had drawn one of my other Zeppelins that's in here, then I can play this to my fleet. And the Zeppelins are very simple. They allow you to play more cards. And so from the other cards I'm holding, I can do a couple of things. I can play these operatives, so resourceful number two over here. And these cards usually let you draw more cards. In this case, this is going to let me get some fate cards. So when you play these, they have a threshold cost right there. So for example, I can play this to my flagship because the, the amount it lets me play is two there. This one, the threshold is one. So I could play it here, and now this Zeppelin would be spent for this round. But if I played it here, which I am allowed to do, it's going to mess this Zeppelin up. So I would have to discard it at the end of my turn, meaning I have to cycle it through my deck, and I have to draw it and play it again later on. But let's say I didn't care about that. Let's say I will do that. So I would play that card. It says I may draw three fake cards and add the lowest to my hand. So I would draw three of these, five, a five, and a three. I would take this one. I would read the event, which is typically very thematic there. And it says when it's acquired, all players take one Zeppelin from their discard pile, add it to their armada. Uh, nobody has a discard pile right now, so it wouldn't matter. And I would put that in my hand. The other two go in the discard pile. And so that's one thing I can do. I can play those types of cards. The other thing I can do is I can play an attack card. Like so. Atta attacks come in uh, different types. So this one, for example, is a cold attack. And uh, when I play it, I have to pick a Zeppelin that will be doing the attacking. And I have to pick a Zeppelin that is going to be the target of my attacks. So let's say I want this uh, ape to get its hands off of me. So I'm going to play this and say I'm attacking the Silverback, which is the name of the ship over there. That player would look at their five cards. Let's assume that's it. And I would say, okay, it's a cold attack. This one is okay because this uh, ship's threshold is a two. And they would look and see if they have a defense card. They do not which um, had a, the same type of, uh, of defense there. So, 
Let me find one in my own deck. See if I even have one in here. Uh -huh -huh. There's a defense. This one has cold and it has psionic. So if they had this card, this is my own deck, but if they had that card, they could play it. Ha ha! And they could stop my attack. If they do not, I will take a card from any one of these piles I want to. I will flip it face down. I will stick it under my ship. That's going to be one victory point at the end of the game. And then the power next to the bomb icon there will go off. In this case, I may acquire one fake card to my discard pile. Fine. However, if they do block me, then, let's say this is theirs, then their defense power goes off, and I would only do a power on my card if it had a circle next to it. These always trigger. So they would do that instead. And so the attacker must discard one electric card. I would have to go in, in my uh, hand and discard an electric card. So that's how that works. If you attack the main flagship, it will not go away. If you attack one of these other flagships, it will go away. And so again, they'd have to draw that, um, that Zeppelin again, play it again. Once I've done that and I've exhausted all my Zeppelins, then I do the buy phase. For the buy phase, I'm going to take a look at my fate cards. I'm going to be able to spend those, in this case, there's seven there, to buy one of these cards. Now the way in this game the buying works is you get rid of the cards after you've spent them. They do not cycle through your deck. So I would discard them and I would say, um, I could buy this. The cost is right there. It gives me some victory points and then it has, it's a defense card which blocks quite a bit of stuff. Now when you acquire a card in this game also, very interesting, this card goes in my hand right away. I do not have to get it later. It goes right into my hand, and then at the end of my turn, once I'm done buying, then I will clean my ships so that I can use them again, and I can discard as much as I want to and draw back up to five. So I would get a couple more cards, and that would be that. Everybody will continue playing like that, attacking each other, playing cards, drawing more of these fate cards, buying these from the center, until three of those five decks are gone. At that point, whoever has the most victory points is the winner. There's also, over here on the side, each faction has a specific Zeppelin, it's an experimental Zeppelin, a chimpanzee over here, that only they can buy, only that faction can buy. So for example, if I wanted to buy my own here, it would be that one, this Kraftwerk. And this one lets me, um, if I attack successfully with this Zeppelin, then I get an extra battle point, meaning I could take two of these and stick them under this one. So again, those are victory points. So that's basically how the game works. So there it is, Zeppelin Attack. As you can tell from that overview, the game is very confrontational. There is a lot of in-your-face action going on. Now, let's get the negative out of the way first. For me, I got a couple of a couple of negatives. The first is the playing decks are really very small. So once you've played this game a couple of times, you'll have seen everything. And this is what I mean. This is one of the decks that you play the game with. This one is the mercenary deck. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cards in this deck. This is one of five. That's it. So there's a, not a ton of variety here. Now, yeah, there's an expansion out there, which actually I have it and pulled out to give you an overview of just the base game. But even with the expansion, it's not a ton of, a ton of variability. There's not a ton of new cards you'll be seeing all the time. Once you've played this a few times, you've seen it all, you know exactly what to expect. The other thing is the game felt way too long for what you're doing in the game. The game, right off the bat, you're smacking each other in the face, it's right in your throat, it is... It's just, it gets, you know, right to the nitty-gritty right away, but then you do the same thing for about an hour. It's too long. The game just, is it drags on. It didn't have a nice arc to it. You did the same thing at the beginning as you did in the middle, as you did in the end, and you do it for about an hour. This game would have been great 
with a nicer build and if it was 30 minutes then I would have nothing to complain about. So there's that. However, that's the negatives. The positives are the game has a really funky and interesting steampunk sort of theme. If you get into the theme you'll have a good time with it. You'll be you know having a good laugh with the names, with the goofy setups. If you know if you if you make it about that then there will be a theme here for you to enjoy. I like that. I like that the game takes a few deck building standbys. You know, you buy stuff and throw it in the discard. The money cycles through your deck. All that stuff. And it turns those things on their head. The money goes away. Which can be rough because it's sometimes hard to win that money back. When you buy a card, it goes right into your hand. I really like that. There's none of that. I bought this, but I'll get it later. I, you know, that was one of those things in deck building games that just always seemed a little absurd to me. I just bought this, but I can't use it. I like that this game lets you buy a card, put it right in your hand, you have it right now. You can save cards from turn to turn. You know, those things just make sense. The game is also very inexpensive, it's a tiny little game. I like that. That goes hand in hand with the fact that there's not going to be a lot of variability in the game because it is so small, there's such few cards, but it's a give and take. So, ultimately, I would recommend the game. I don't think it has the legs to be something that would stay in my collection for, for a very long time, but I do enjoy it. I'm glad I got it, I'm glad I've played it. I have gotten uh, a good amount of fun out of it, but if that's something that sounds good to you, check it out. Just go into it knowing that it's not perfect, there are a few issues with it, but if it's something you've been jonesing to try, a new deck building game, one with teeth and confrontation, and the theme is something that appeals to you, I'd say go ahead and try Zeppelin Attack. Boom! Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com.